y'all. <clears throat> We're gonna get started in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and invite everybody. Feel free to hop on if you can. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask um, throughout this training. Okay, let me get everyone invited. When you hop on, say hello. We're just going to talk a little bit, do a training today. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Let me know how y'all are doing when you hop on. Hey girl, hey girl, hey. All right, I think I am gonna use that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Maybe give it just another minute or so and see if anybody else wants to hop on. When you hop on, say hello, so I know you're on here, whoops. the ring light going because I just thought it would look better. <laughs> it's cold in North Carolina today, y'all. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know people are going to come back and watch the replay, so I have lots of notes that I took and was writing down yesterday um, on just, I don't know, I didn't even know what I was going to train on or talk about and I just kind of started writing and this is um, what I came up with. So what are you missing in your business? Think about what are you missing in your business right now? Massive growth is available to us right now. We just launched a brand new spring and summer catalog. We have a $25 join opportunity this month. This can be your massive growth month. I had my second girl join yesterday. I'm so proud of myself. I have at least three other people interested. Um, one other one was supposed to join yesterday, but she didn't yet. So <clears throat> you have an opportunity right now this month to have a massive growth month. You've got to start sharing all of the things. If you are sitting back and waiting on people to come to you, your business is not going to grow. You cannot just sit there and wait for people to come to you. It's just, it's not going to happen. You know why? Because people feel the same way as you do. They're scared. They don't want to be the person to take the initiative to like get in chat or any of that. People are just like that okay so you got to open your mouth if you want to be successful you've got to open your mouth you've got to do things that the one percent of this company are doing the ssds are doing you've got to do what they're doing okay how can we take it by the horns and run with it <clears throat> it is your choice it is your choice what you do in your business it is your choice what you decide to do to have massive growth this month okay so we're going to talk about customer follow-up. Customer follow-up is the main ingredient in this business. If you are not following up with your customers, you are doing yourself a huge, huge disservice. So did you know, and this, I didn't even write this down. You can go to your workstation. You can click on reporting. You can click sales report 
and then you can click reorder and you can look at every single person that has ever ordered from you and you can change the month so I just did this um, not yesterday day before yesterday I went in there I wrote down every single person that has not ordered in the past three months the in the past six months and I just reached out to them I'm also went back to the last 12 months as well so the people that haven't ordered in a year and I wrote them down and I am telling you right here all my people and I'm gonna go back even further than that I'm gonna do two years because when I first joined it was almost two years ago so I'll probably do like the next the next one I'm gonna do is like 18 months and I'm gonna write those people down that have not ordered from me since I joined and I'm gonna follow up with these people a lot of my people join my team but there are people out there that just have forgotten y'all because we have forgotten to stay in touch with them okay so i challenge y'all to do that i challenge you to get into your workstation go to your reporting tab click sales report click reorder and then go down through there i would not follow up with anybody that just ordered last month i would at least do the two months and back so i challenge y'all to do that today make your list and then start on your follow-up process um, with them okay excellent customer follow-ups affects our business we should start forward thinking forward thinking listen we should start forward thinking and really start thinking about what our business is going to look like in six months from now you should not be thinking about today you should be thinking what can I do today that is going to help me six months from now what can I do today that's going to help me grow six months from now today may be great your prv may be high people may be booking parties with you today but what's going to happen in your business six months from now down the road when we may not have ltos what if what if disney said they no longer want to work with sensi anymore what if we no longer have disney products what if six months from now since he's like, we're only going to do warmers and wax. We're not going to have any other products but warmers and wax. How is your business going to look? People are getting busy. This is going to start being the busy time of the year, especially in the next few months. People are going to start taking vacations because it's almost summer. The world. What if the world changes? What if there is a big... somebody at the door what if there's a big life circumstance that happens and it affects your life what if it affects your business what are you gonna do how how are you gonna sustain your business if something big in your life happens what are you gonna do you've got to be thinking about those things right now what if something happens in your life what if a family member passes away what if I don't know something happens what are you gonna do right now that can help your business when that comes when that happens one of the biggest mistakes consultants make is not forward focusing or forward thinking because we're so present in the now moment that we're just like in the now and we're not planning ahead and we're not building our future business y'all we're just thinking about what can we do today we need to start thinking about what can we do today that's going to help us six months from now what are we going what kind of actions are we going to put in place what kind of um, plans are we going to put in place that we can start doing today that's going to help us six months from now when you don't have excellent follow-up Excellent, excellent customer service care or a good system for follow-ups. You're not planning your future business. Listen, I'm guilty for not following up all the time. I'm pretty good at it. Can I be better? Yes. So I am going to start doing the reporting. I'm going to start pulling my reports every single month for the people that haven't ordered in the past three months. And I'm going to make it... Um, I'm going to make it an every month thing where I am following up with these people. 
That is awesome, Darla. See, you're already, you're already ahead of the game, girl. You're planning to fail if you are not taking care of your customers, if you're not following up with them. You are going to fail. Let's help turn those wheels today and start thinking about what is excellent customer service. What is excellent customer service? What does that look like to you? What does excellent customer service look like to you? When you go out to a restaurant, what do you expect? You expect your waiter or waitress to be amazing, to have a good attitude, to check up on you like every, you know, 10 minutes or so, making sure your drink, you know, they're always refilling your drink, making sure you don't need something to go along with your meal. Um, that's good follow, they're doing the same thing. That is good follow, that's a good follow up system. If you're a good waiter or waitress, you make sure that your person sitting at that table does not run out of water or whatever is in their cup. You're always making sure that it's filled up. Or they don't run out of rolls or whatever it may be. That's good follow up. What does good follow up look like to you? What do relationships look like? So let's do a little self assessment, okay? I know there's not a lot of people on here and that's okay. Y'all are going to catch the replay. So those that come on here, please type out um, your questions, your answers as well. What does <clears throat> customer follow up look like? Has it been excellent? Have you been proactively meeting the needs of your customers or have you been reactionary? Like someone messages you about booking a party and you say, oh, I can do that. And you think that's, that's being a good consultant, but how much more of a good consultant could you be if you were proactive and you reached out to your people about booking a party, about the joint opportunity? Do you see that? Reactive and proactive. Reactionary means you're someone that sits back and you wait on your customers to message you. You wait on your customers for when they get their order in to tell you how they feel about the order that they placed. You, if you're reactive, you're just sitting back and you're like a sitting duck. You, you want your customers to come to you. Can't be like that. I mean, you can. You may, you may have a little success with that, but you've got to be proactive. You've got to be the go-getter and be like checking up on your customers. Hey, girl, your um, Cincy order shipped. Here's your tracking number. If you promise your customer that you're going to check up on their order, you best dang do it because guess what? If not... They're not, they're not gonna, they're gonna lose trust in you. Oh, she don't care about me, right? And I think I wrote that down in here too. Um, so how much of a better consultant could you be if you were proactive and you reached out to your customers instead of you waiting on them to come to you, right? We've got to quit waiting because guess what? Nine times out of 10, your customer's not going to message you. They get busy too. What happens when we meet new people and we don't follow up or put them into our contacts tab? What, when you go to Starbucks and you hand out like your business card or whatever, if you have time, get their information, like write down their name and their number, ask them if they're on Facebook. Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to, I'm going to friend request you and we're going to chat girl. That's a good follow-up. Or ask how they are liking the products they ordered. I do this. So when I notice that someone's order has shipped, I look when it's delivered and I usually give them like two days and then I follow up with them and I'm like, hey girl, what did you think about Honeymoon Hideaway? Or what did you think about Coco Lawn? Did you, do you love that scent as much as I do? Like that is one of my favorite scents. I hope you fell in love with that scent, right? If we never follow up, we will have to continue to start over and meet all new people just to get orders. If you never follow up with your customers, they're gonna lose trust in you. They're gonna forget about you and they're not gonna reorder. They're gonna go find someone else that sells Scentsy. Y'all, there's so many Scentsy consultants out there. You've got to be the one that stands out. You've got to be the one that they're like, oh, she is my girl. You know what? You know why I recruited somebody yesterday? Because I, one of my best customers saw her friend post that she was looking for a Scentsy consultant. And guess what? Guess what my friend did? She said, 
Serena Michelle Norton, she tagged me, is the best Scentsy consultant. She is the one I've been ordering from for two years now. Please message her. She is amazing. She was the first person to comment. Her friend, oh, I did not wait on her friend to message me, girlfriend. As soon as my name was tagged, I messaged this girl. And her name's Leslie. She just joined my team. I messaged her and I said, hey, I saw that Jamie, which is one of my best customers, messaged you or tagged me in your post. I would love to help you with joining Scentsy. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me go ahead and show you both of the join opportunities. We have a $25 kit and a $99 kit. I know that you love Scentsy. That's why you asked about joining. Um, Please message me back and let me know what questions you had. She was mess We messaged each other off and on. She was working yesterday. And then when she got off work, she joined my team, y'all. And you want to know what? Her, her comment section was lit up with all kinds of people. There was even some people on my team right here that commented and said, Hey, I would love to help you. I would love to have you on my team. But if my friend had never tagged me in that post, that would have been a missed opportunity. But guess what? If I didn't take, if I did not take care of my customers, that customer would never had tagged me in that post. She would have never shouted me out. So that's why good customer follow up is very important. Referrals are the best; they really are. So when you follow up with your people, they're going to take care of you. They're going to take care of you because when they see someone else looking for uh, needing a Scentsy consultant, whether it's joining or Scentsy products, they're going to remember you and they're going to tag you in that post. Take care of your people. Take care of your people. <clears throat> the effort it takes to take care of a customer you already have is much less than the effort it takes to meet and acquire a new customer who actually purchases with you. It is much easier to get someone to reorder from you when you stay in contact with that person than it is to go out and find new customers and, tr and get that customer to order from you. Because you have to sit there and build that relationship, build that trust for them to even want to place the order. Right? So follow up, y'all, is like number one in my book. Like, we don't play. Follow up is where it's at. And if you're not following up, you're doing yourself a huge, huge disservice in your business. So what I'm saying is, if you're, is your existing customers and your relationships with them gold? Are you golden? Are you doing what you need to do to take care of your people? They are the future of your business. They are what will build your business in six months. Follow up with your customers. If you don't have a follow-up system, Listen, Linda, do what I do, write it down. I'm sorry, there are 5 billion dang forms out there in Sensi land to follow up with customers, but you know what I always, always, always revert back to? Hi, Sean. Pen and paper. I am old school. I don't like um, Excel spreadsheets, Google Docs, all of that is just fancy. That's bougie. That's being that's being bougie. Whoa now. Pen and paper, baby. Pen and paper. Google I. Doc, baby. What? Google Sheets. Shut up. Don't listen to my husband. <laughs> Pen and paper. If you. Right now. I'm not very tech savvy. I flipping hate getting on a computer and trying to figure out all the things. Me and Canva have a love hate. Um, a love-hate relationship like Google Documents. I do good to copy and paste y'all and I'm telling you you don't have to be an expert. You don't need all the fancy things. You just need pen and paper. Pen and paper. Figure out your workstation. There's tons of trainings. Yes, you need to know how to do how to work your workstation but you don't need all these fancy forms. You don't need to be like everybody else. Be yourself, do what works for you, get you some pen and paper, and just do the work. I'm done. I'm done. We're done for today. <laughs> I always go back to pen and paper. I try doing all the forms. I try doing all the things. I have a notebook. I do have certain forms that I have printed out, like party list, and I can write all their names down, who's partying, what month. 
and when to follow up. That one I love. Courtney Reyes posted a ton of those, um, which she got, I think they came from um, Jennifer and Anderson. She has amazing forms. But I'm telling you, when it comes to follow-ups, for me, pen and paper is what works. I have tried everything else, but I always go back to just getting my notebook out, writing it all down. It's just... It's what works, so do what works for you. If you are good at technology and you're good at all these different forms and Google Documents and Express, and you can do all of that, good for you, like, you're amazing, because I can't do all that. <coughs> Pen and paper. It's just easy for me. I know what I'm doing. I know what to write down. It just, that's what I go back to. So do what works for you. Sorry, y'all. I got an iced coffee. Okay, let me read this. I got a ton of that when I first started where people were like, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. I realized after a bit that you have to figure out, yeah, don't do what everybody else is doing. I mean, it's great that they share things and I share things with you guys because we're all different. God created us all differently <coughs> and we all work differently. And that is okay. I'm just saying like if those, all of that other stuff is like more of a distraction and it takes up more time for you than just doing pen and paper, do pen and paper. Because that's what it was doing for me. All of that fanciness of printing this, printing that, it was a distraction. It was taking way more time to figure out all of that stuff. Pen and paper, less time. It's just, I know where it's at. It's easier. I can just pull this notebook out and I'm good. Okay? I mean, I write down my trainings, y'all. I don't even print it out for you guys because why, why, why waste that time of typing it all out when I can just write it and I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Yes, exactly. Exactly, Sean. So, <coughs> your customer relationships you need to nurture and foster. You need to nurture and foster those relationships. Yes, we're in the fragrance in industry, but we're actually in the relationship business. If you're new to Scentsy, you'll come to find out that there is a different vibe in Scentsy. That it, it's all about building relationships and getting to know people. Listen, I'm an introvert. I understand that it is scary to even send a message to someone to check up on them, that it's scary to even send a message and say, hey girl, I, I just started Scentsy and I am loving these products. I've been obsessed for 10 years. I decided to join, but I wanted to share that with you. I know that that's scary to do because it's putting yourself out there, but you've got to stop wondering and thinking, oh my gosh, what is this person going to think about me when I send this message? Who cares? If they don't like it, they just won't respond and that's okay. But you decided to join Scentsy for a reason, most likely to make a little bit of extra income or maybe to build a big empire one day. Stop want worrying about what other people think because if you continue to let them think what they think and you worry about that, well, guess what? That's only going to hold you back from success. You're not, you're not going to be successful if you continue to worry about what other people think and you don't put in what you need to be doing. Yes, I know I'm an introvert, y'all. It scares the crap out of me to send messages every day. But if I don't send those messages, I'm not getting those sales. I, I'm not sponsoring the people that I need to sponsor. And when I think about sponsoring, y'all, it's not, oh my gosh, I just added someone to my team. No, it's about I'm actually going to be able to change someone's life possibly through, through Sensi. Like, that is incredible. It, um, <clears throat> people are going to buy Scentsy because nothing is better than what we have. But we need to make impacts in our customers' lives. We need to provide value for them, getting to know them. That's what I'm, that's what I'm worried about. Is that's the future of my business. I am worried about adding the value and making sure they understand why I love Scentsy so much and helping them feel what I feel about these products. What does heartfelt customer follow-up feel like to you? What does it look like to you? What does heartfelt customer follow-up look like to you? Exactly. And there are going to be customers you cannot make happy. There's going to be customers that complain about every single thing that you do. You just ignore that. 
and move on. You're going to have, if you build a team, you're going to have negative Nancy's. We're going to be talking about that, I think. I don't remember if I wrote that down. But you're going to have people on your team that just, quite frankly, are just negative all the time. Guess what? Don't pay that any mind. Just continue to be you, girl. Continue to be you. Stand up and be the leader that you were designed to be. And show up for the one person that is always going to be there watching you and rooting for you. Because not every single person is going to like you in this business. And that is totally okay. You're not here to make other people <laughs> like you. You're here to do the dang thing. Make money. And help other people understand why you love Cincy. And if people don't like you, toodaloo. Goodbye. Kick rocks. Kick rocks. Prove them wrong. Prove those haters wrong. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother training. <laughs> uh, okay. So heartfelt customer follow-up. It's connecting with someone on social media, inside of parties, and home parties, the barista at Starbucks, whatever. The, gro the person that checks out your groceries, if you do that, I do grocery pickup because I hate grocery shopping and I think grocery pickup is the best thing they ever created. I love it. I love it. If you didn't connect instantly with those people on social media, we have to take their info and connect with them on social media. Then we have to get to know them and let them get to know us. Let's be honest, our customers can buy from anyone. There's tons of Sensi consultants, y'all. So what makes them wanna buy from me? What makes them wanna buy from you? No. Yeah, Sean, you're gonna have that. Be like, okay, go check out the, go check out the ingredients on the Walmart wax you're using. <laughs> Actually, don't do that, but just seriously. People are always saying, well, I can get Walmart wax. Yeah, have you looked at the ingredients? Have you touched the wax when you warm Walmart wax? Like, have you um, looked at the cube size? A lot smaller. It may be $2, but do you see all those nasty ingredients? No. And you know what? I want to step out of my comfort zone at Walmart. Like, Justin's told me, my husband's told me to do this. Like, when you see someone looking at the candles, go up to them and be like, Hey, girl, I see that you love candles. Well, have you, have you heard about Scentsy? I want to do that, but I'm like, is it going to rub them the wrong way? <laughs> Will they, like, punch me in the face for doing that? <laughs> but seriously, I want to do that. Okay. Where was I at? Let's be honest, our customers can buy from anyone. Okay, I already talked about that. But what makes them want to buy from me? It's the relationship that you have. It's the heartfelt relationship building and the effective customer follow-up. Your customers have to get to know you. So, what do you got to do? You've got to share about your life. You, people forget to share about their life. And knowing this is how your customers get to know you, so post about it in your stories on Facebook, wherever. Show how you're changing your wax. Do quick stories on how you're cleaning your house with Scentsy products. It doesn't have to be salesy or weird. Just share what you love. Also, don't forget to share about, if you have kids, share your kids, your pets. I walked outside yesterday because it was beautiful and I got on my stories and I'm like, oh my gosh, I had to step outside for a moment because it feels so good out here. And now it's flipping cold and it's going to be cold through next week. And by cold, you mean in the 50s. And by cold, I mean in the 50s. If it is under the, if it is, if it is below 70, I am cold. He used to be the same way, but now that he, when he got cancer and he had to go through all of that, y'all, he's like, he loves cold weather. And I'm over here like, heck to the no. We are not just Scentsy. Scentsy is what we do, what we share, but we need to also share all the other parts about who we are. If you love pineapples and animal print, share it. I share about this tattoo all the time. And... 
it may have different meanings and I, that I didn't know of before I put it on my body, but that has nothing to do with me. I just loved pineapples. My daughter drew a pineapple with animal print one day and because she knows I love both. And I went and got that tattoo for my birthday that year because of her drawing. Um, I love dandelions and I have a tattoo on my back of dandelions with like someone blowing it, but it doesn't have the person. It's just dandelions with the little things through the air. Um, I love cows, y'all. I bought a farmhouse. Eventually, we're going to have real life cows and goats and I'll be able to share all about my farm animals and take pictures with them and share that. But you've got to share who you are so your people can connect with you. If you see a cute like cow video on TikTok, share it to your Instagram stories. I do that all the time because they are the cutest. I love Highland cows. Yeah, that's my husband. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to North Carolina where the weather is like, hey, where it's going to be 80 degrees all week. Next week it's like, oh no, no it's not. It's going to be 50 and 40. But I'll take that over the flipping humidity in Florida because sweat for days all summer long. I don't like, I miss the beach part, but guess what? I, I moved to the coast of North Carolina, and I get both of be the best of both worlds because we're not too far from the beach here. So, remember to share all the parts of you. I mean, you don't have to share, like, all the parts. I almost wanted to share yesterday. My son told me he didn't want to be part of my family anymore. He's five years old. So, I, made, I kicked him out and put him on our porch, and I shut the door, and I locked it. And I almost put, got in my stories yesterday and said, he decided to run away. He didn't get too far. But I didn't because I'm like, I don't want nobody turning this mama in. And guess what? He actually stayed out there longer than I thought. We all ate dinner. He didn't want to come in. I checked on him like all the time. He didn't want to come in. No, mom. He was so mad at me, y'all. But then when it got dark, he freaked out and was knocking on the door, <laughs> knocking on the door. Huh? It wasn't even dark. It was like almost, it was like 6.15, you know. So, anyways. Your customers have to like you. This and means. It, and it was all because you cooked what he didn't think he was going to Yeah, he, got, he wanted to run away because I made crunch wraps, ta um, like Taco Bell and he he didn't like the way that it looked and he's like I don't want to be a part of this family anymore okay well if you don't want to be a part of this family kick rocks goodbye <laughs> and guess what when he came in and he ate dinner he's like oh my gosh mom this is so good I know gosh my y'all kids nowadays all right your customers have to like you this means be kind be in positive. Don't share negativity. I see this so much where people share so much negativity and then they're coming to me and asking me, why are my customers not ordering? Why, do nobody, why does nobody want to join my team? Well, Linda, listen. I just looked at the last 10 posts that you did and it's all talking about this and this person and this person and this person. Ain't nobody want to be a part of that. Nobody's going to join under somebody that is constantly talking about someone else or just negative about the world or has certain situations going on and it's just negative and negative and negative and negative. Nobody wants to be a part of that. Be positive, right? Even when you don't want to feel, you don't feel positive or you're not having a good day, still share positivity. Be kind and be generous. Your customers have to trust you. So this means do what you say you're going to do. If you say I'm going to send you an update when your order ships, you better do what you're, you're going to say you're doing. Because if not, they're not going to trust you. Another part of them trusting you is you have to stick this one out forever. You decided to join Scentsy. It is not always going to be rainbows and sunshines. Because if it was, we'd all be SSDs right now. You're going to have roadblocks. Why? Because God's going to test you, girl. The devil's going to roll in and say, not today. Not today. Today's not going to be your good day. Or not this week or not this month. Things are going to happen. But you've got to push through it and stick with it because... God don't check your bank account. He checks your faith. That's right. 
Y'all hear him? God doesn't check your bank account. He checks your faith. He is going to test you. And guess what? He knows that you want to be successful in this. He knows why. And guess what? He sent Sensi to you along your path for a reason. You've got to stick Ooh, it out. That hit deep. deep oh my gosh. Go on. <laughs> I'm full of Lord all kinds of Jesus, awesome slogans. Lord Jesus, someone come get him. <laughs> I got all kinds of awesome, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Somebody come get amazing him. Amazing <laughs> slogans inside this yes, we know. brain of mine. I'm going to let him do the next training. Y'all want my husband to do the next the training? Oh, the devil be pe Girl, since we moved, the devil been up in here. Like, testing me and Justin. E every day. Every day. The one-liners. <laughs> oh, gosh, Darla. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. Be amazed. No, she said something. Oh. Okay. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Another part of your customers trusting you is you have to stick this one out forever. You cannot hop to company, to companies, to company, to company. Stick it out. I've been there. I've been there. I did two other companies before Sensi, and this has been the most successful I've ever been. Um, and I'm never, I'm, I'm never leaving. I'm not. This is, this is, this is it for me. You cannot work for three months and then end up doing nothing in your business and then come back and work one day and ghost your customers. Trust is built when your words match your actions over time. You cannot join Sensi and post for three straight months and then all of a sudden nothing for three months and then come back and think that like your people are going to continue to order or your people are going to join your team. You just ghosted them for three months. What do you expect? I'm going to pick up those customers, baby, because I'm working every day, Monday through Friday, at least. I'm going to, I'm going to be picking up the slack when I, when I see those people are left behind. Because if I don't, someone else will. Don't ghost your people. If you want people to quit trusting you, ghost. They'll be like, peace out. She wasn't in it for the long haul. But when, you're, when your customers see that you're going through a hard time and you're giving it your all and you're doing what you're supposed to do, the, the, those are the ones, the ones that have your back, the ones that are going to be there for you. Those are the ones that are going to continue to trust in you and your business regardless of what you're going through. Trust is built in relationships. When your customers know, like, and trust you, they're going to support you. They're going to support you, not because of the Scentsy products. I mean, that's part of it. But when they know you, like they really get to know you, and they trust you, and they like you. Darla would have never joined my team had I not built that relationship. Angela would have never joined my team if we didn't build that relationship. Well, Angela is my, in, in my husband's family, so she would have seen all that. But, I mean... We didn't really like talk a ton until I did Sensi and she noticed that I was doing Sensi and now we've just built that relationship and she decided to join. But you've got to build those relationships. The whole point of follow up is to nurture your relationships with your customers and follow up does not mean, hey girl, you just ordered. Can I get you another six pack of wax? No. Following up is like, hey girl, I hope that you're loving your Firefly warmer and your honeymoon hideaway scent wax scent bar. How is life? Like, how are you doing? How is how is Brandon, your son? How's he doing in school? Follow up does not mean just following up about Sensi. Follow up is like getting to know your people, building that relationship. Oh, I saw that you just got back from Disney with your family. How was that? I been wanting to take a Disney trip, but my husband's totally against Disney and that'll never happen. So this mom has got to build a legacy so that I can like make some, so that, I, yep, here I go, so that I can make enough money to take me and my kids to Disney because I want them to go to Disney before they're like grown one day. I know that it's expensive. Learn all the wrong things. Oh my gosh, that person got fired.
Yes. Yes, Sean. And since these core values, y'all, generosity, right? Be generous. Be respectful. Authenticity. Be yourself. Don't be like everybody else. If you're building those relationships, sales will come. Parties will come. People to join your team will happen through relationships. No one is going to buy from you. No one is going to join your team. No one is going to book a party if you are not building that relationship. It's not going to happen because they're not going to know who you are. You're going to be that person that's just messaging them to get a sale. I just had that happen this morning and yesterday because, because I liked their post. And they're like, hey, can I get you started on your health journey? I said, no, thank you. I'm just spreading some love because I am also a business owner with Scentsy. And I just love supporting other people by spreading the love and liking and commenting on your posts. She did not ask me who I was, how I was doing. Hey, can I get you started on your health journey? I noticed you liked my post. Just because I liked it didn't mean I wanted a new health journey. Thank you for trying to sell me something instead of getting to know me. Get to know your people. Focus on the relationships. Focus on the whole being. Focus on the person. Focus on adding value to their life. Focus on what they bring to the table and how you connect and how you can bless each other's lives and how you can encourage each other. I want to build a freaking massive team and I want to I want to be able to have um, like team things here on the farm eventually when we remodel and we have enough space for people. I would love to do like an outdoor movie night with people on my team that want to come and do that like but I, I've got to build, continue to build that trust and that relationship, right? Focus on that. Sales will come because you're showing and you're sharing. You're sharing about your life. You're letting them get to know you. Sales will come. Don't worry. We have the best products out there. Focus on the relationship. Once you have the buy, host, join with them, the relationship still has to exist. If they're buying, if they're hosting parties and they're joining your team, you still have to have those relationships. You still have to check up on your people. I just sent out a crap ton of messages yesterday checking up on my team. And I didn't even get to everybody. But I tried to do that at least once a month. I know I, I check up on my team every morning. But like really checking up on people like Hey, how are you doing? Like, seriously, how are you doing? I'm not wanting to know how you're doing with Cincy. I want to know, like, how are you doing? Like, you. Your life. Cincy is great. I see your numbers. We're, we're good. I want to know how you're doing. That's really, really, like, when I ask you how you're doing, ladies, men, I really want to know how are you doing, like, in your life. And if you want to talk about it, great. If not, that's fine, too. But I want you to know that I am a leader that is here. I'm here to listen. I'm here to give advice, whatever you may need. I'm here to be a friend if you want it. <laughs> um, I'm here as your leader if you want that. Like, you know, if you're not doing the work of following up or connecting, um, we forget we're when we're busy, that customer follow-ups is our future of our business. I don't care how busy you are. You have to take the time to do the follow-ups. You know when I usually do follow-ups? Either first thing in the morning or right near the end of my day. I try to do the follow-ups. And I try to do as many as I can. I don't do them all in one day. Um, but I have two days a week. I try to do them like Mondays and Wednesdays. I do my follow-ups and customer stuff then. Um, so that's, that's what I do. So build a system, get a Monday through Friday calendar and create what you want to do and write it out so that it is duplicatable, but it's also something that will hold you accountable to do like Mondays and Wednesdays or follow-ups, customer days, customer mail outs, if I'm doing mail outs, um, 
just customer base stuff. Tuesdays and Thursdays are normally, and I know I'm on here on a Wednesday, but usually Tuesdays and Thursdays are team days. That's when I really de dig deep with my team. And then Fridays are kind of like my um, do everything Friday that I didn't get done Monday through Thursday. And then stuff to prep for the next week. That's what I do on Fridays. I don't care how you do your follow-ups, but you have to focus on the relationships. So let's all do a self-evaluation about all of our customers you've met. Have you been nurturing those relationships? Have you been connecting beyond, hey, do you like your stuff? The sales come when they can connect with us. It's about adding value and getting to know our people. It's not just about another sale or a party. Those will come. It's about relationships and getting to know, really know your customers. And that's all I have right now. You've really got to, I should have brought my um, binder in here. It's in the living room. You've really got to figure out your, your system that works for you and write that system down. Like I said, do that Monday through Friday calendar and write out what days you're going to do things and hold yourself accountable for that. Um, I ended up at this group because I was a a friend of Alex from the men's Cincy group, the leader, oops, sorry, sorry y'all. The leadership team when I signed up originally was there for us in the beginning and they basically ghosted us for extensive periods of time. Most of the time we only hear from them when it's important about numbers. I had some other issues with a toxic sponsor. welcome and I appreciate you being on this team like I welcome anybody there are uh, quite a few people in here that's not even on my team and I'm an, uh, like open arms I will welcome anybody if you want to come learn and, and bring value if you want to go live at any time and just share something that works for you feel free I'm still trying to get some of my ladies to do that on my team but I know, like some people, they're just, you know, scared, and that's okay. <laughs> Darla <laughs> could be one. Um, because. Darla! <laughs> because I can only train so much on certain things, and y'all hear me all the time, and I know that we're all different. We all work differently. We all work different hours. Some of us have other jobs. Um, no, 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 you're fine. But I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, like I'm doing things to help my customers, to help improve myself. And when I do stuff like that, I always share it with you guys because we are better together. I am never gonna do something and keep it to myself. Like, like the um, block parties in your VIP group where you invite all of your hostesses to your VIP group. You do the posting for a week in there. You have all of the hostesses links with every single post that you do. Like that is something new I found out about and then I shared it with you guys. Feel free to do that. If you don't like doing and I'm telling you, I do Facebook parties. That's what works for me. That's what's always worked for me. Um, I've done text message parties before. Well, not text message, but messenger parties. I had a little bit of success out of that. Um, but the block parties are nice as well because it's less posting in like 10 instead of posting in 10 groups I'm posting in just my VIP group for one week and then I'm keeping their link open for another week after that so that their people can order if they would like um, and then I'm only doing one post instead of 10 of the same post um, but I do still have people that like their individual group parties and I still do that as well so yeah if there's anything that you do that you're seeing success with or you just found out about and you want to share feel free to share it in this group page that's what we're here for we're here to help each other because we are better together mm. and um yeah so that's everything i had just remember you are more than just sensi you may be a mom a sister a wife a grandma um and let people know that let people know like yeah you know that i do sensi but i'm also a mom or I'm, I also like to, I don't know, 
you know, keep plants alive. I am not good at that. I kill everything that I try to have in my home. <laughs> but So I don't share about that because I'm not good at it. But share things that you enjoy. You know, like if you take a drive with your family, share about it. If you go out to eat with your family, share about it. Let people see who you are. Not just Scentsy. If all you post is just Scentsy or share in your stories about Scentsy, like they're going to get, they're just going to scroll on by. Girl, succulent plant. My mom kept it alive for me when we moved and then she brought it here. It's already dead. <laughs> it's still sitting outside. It's already dead. I'm not good with plants, but whatever. So don't focus on the sale. Don't focus on all of that. That will come. Focus on nurturing those relationships and finding new relationships, sending out those friends requests, and then getting to know that person. I, when people, friend, when I send out friends requests and they accept them, I immediately go to their page and I like a few of their posts and I'll comment. Like if they redid their profile picture, like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Or, oh my gosh, your son is so cute. Your dog is adorable. I also have a boxer. Like that is building those relationships. Um, and then they'll start seeing your posts too. So, Focus on the relationships, be positive, nurture those relationships, help your customers trust you, follow up with them, come up with a follow-up system if you don't have one. Pen and paper may be your best, best tool because it is for me. So does anybody have any questions before I jump off of here um, about anything that I went over or maybe something else that you just had a question about? Yeah, I don't blame me. And I'll go back and read the... Um, the comments, because I did not read them all. I've been in retail too, Sean. Um, I used to be a manager at Target. Oh my gosh, how long was I there? So I worked there. So 17... I think I was there for like five years and then I ended up being a, um, we moved and stuff and then I ended up being a manager at Walmart and I will never, ever, ever work in retail again. No, thank you. And quite frankly, I don't ever really want to work other than working from home. So, <laughs> uh, I know you're still working. I'm reading y'all's messages. All right, so I don't see any comment. Oh, girl, y'all don't even want to know. I have a birthday in a couple months. Y'all don't even want to know. And I'm going to get this hair cut short because it's too long. All right, I'm going to hop off here. If y'all have any questions, um, private message me by all means. If you need help with anything, feel free to reach out. Um, but I love you guys. I hope y'all have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you for taking time out of your day to just listen. And I hope that this added some value. I hope that this just helped you learn something today. Um, I know it was kind of just straight to the point, like, duh, I should have already known that already, but like, it's helped me understand that I do need to continue to build those relationships and get to know get to know people. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm digging deep in this season. And, um, that's what I'm focusing on. So I hope y'all have an awesome day and I'll talk to y'all later.